Hi, my name is Glenn Stein. I'm the CEO and founder of Conquest for Life. It's a community-based organization in Westbury Nuclear. Um, I'm also an, an Ashoka Fellow. Uh, we work with children and young people and adults as well. Uh, young people in conflict with the law, young people that want to make a change in their lives, young people that have problems and we try and create alternatives uh, where we take the responsibility and give it back to the individual and together we work towards a solution. Um, you know, young people who are not allowed to be part of the solution will always be part of the problem. And we believe that young people are not the leaders of tomorrow or next year. Young people are the leaders of today and they can make a change, they can make a difference. When was the NGO formed? Conquest for Life was uh, formed in October 1995. Um, we uh, registered the organization in January 1996 um, as a NPC, a non-profit company. And then afterwards we registered it as a non-profit organization. So what is the main focus of the organization? The main focus of the organization is to create alternatives for, um, let me say, the community as a whole because we're working with children, youth and adults. Um, where we work with problematic children, pro people who's got issues, problems, people who need help. And what we do, we take the responsibility, give it back to the individual and work with them through the process. Um, Young people, you know, they, they're the leaders of um, today, not tomorrow. Uh, if they want to be the change, if they want to see the change, they need to be the change. And this is what we encourage the young people. One of the slogans that we've got here at Conquest for Life is, if it's to be, it's up to me. So if they want to be the change or they want to make a change, it's up to them. What's your most successful program and why? I would say, um, the, the, the most successful program is basically working with the problematic young people. Uh, you know, young people that have um, uh, smoking drugs, young people involved in alcohol, young people involved in, you know, truancy at school, banking at school, young people that commit small crimes. This is where we, we work with the young people for a period of six to eight weeks, sometimes 10 weeks. And the, the, the most exciting thing for us, the success is when you see them change from a minus to a plus, from an A to a B. You know, when you when you meet them in the street and they tell you, hey, thank you very much. Hey, has it not been for you? There's many stories that we can tell you. There's many things that I can show you on my, on my, on my laptop where people wrote um, Thank you letters to us for, for, for changing their lives. And we've been doing it now for the past 26 years. Yeah. Um, how has the organization assisted the communities during the pandemic? Yo, um, when the pandemic, uh, pandemic hits um, South Africa in March, it was, um, it all caught us by surprise. We didn't know what was going on, um, you know, Remember in March, um, the president basically shut down the country. Uh, our organization was maybe closed for a week. And after that, we decided, no, we need to come back as people and help us. So during the pandemic, we helped people with food vouchers, with food. Uh, we helped them register for the SASA grants, the 350. We helped them with um, getting information, where to get food parcels. We shared a lot of information. Um, we ne we network with other organizations, woke up with them, and um, I think the correct figure that we've got uh, us with, with the other organizations that we work with, there's about ten organizations. I think we fed about over two hundred thousand people, and that does not include the yeah, Westbury, it includes Coronation for Nuclear Postman, Ravelli, Ravelli Extension, Noordgesig, Enadel, Soweto. Colorado Park, Grand Fontaine, um, even fear of Osmond. We we fed people all over the place, and you know, thank God, um, none of the people that we work with, our staff, 
our volunteers, and even the organizations. None of them got sick. All of them are well. Um, give me your best example of the way you've seen your organization's work make a difference. I mean, I can, um, I've got a good example here. For example, um, Dinsani, one of the, the guys that's working for me. Uh, he came to the organization, uh, he couldn't find a job. Um, he was basically uh, powerless. He didn't know what to do. So we offered him a job. And the, the job that we offered him is that he works with young people. So the concept that we have here at Conquest for Life is young people working with young people. They can relate better to each other. They can talk to each other. They know the vibes, they know the language, they know the lingo, and also they're from the community. So they know the community. They know when the community takes advantage of you. They know who's the thieves and the scalons and, and all those type of, type of characters. So we work with young people within that community. So in terms of understanding the community, we don't have to orientate you about the community. They know the community. They know where's the drug loads. They know where's the shipments. They know where's this one and that one. So, so that is um, one of the, the most successful things that we've done as Conquest for Life. Our participants became our employees. They first become volunteers, then they come in, become our employees. And then after that, you know, once they've reached whatever they want to reach, they then go out and, and look for another job. One of my board members at the moment was a participant that was in my program. Um, she worked for us, then afterwards she got a job at the um, uh, Department of Safety and Security Provincial. She's currently a social worker. She's working, studying now for a master's degree, and she's one of our board members. What could you do better? I think what I, what I would have done better is, um, you know, reach out more to um, our problematic young people and come up with um, a, a, a job. I won't say a job creation because it's very difficult to create jobs nowadays. You know, your, your sources of supplies may be closed down, but come up with a job placement project where we can create um, uh, proper jobs, regional job. But job creation for me is when we, when we make the product from scratch and sell it, that that is uh, what we could have done better. We, we have started with it a bit, but I think, um, uh, you know, I was too all over the place. Uh, I was supposed to focus more, uh, plan more, and uh, even network more because I can't do it on my own. And how did the pandemic um, enhance the challenges for you? Sure, I think, you know, one of the, and you will, if you speak to, 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 to the organizations or any just, they will tell you that the ep epidemic has um, uh, hit our, our funds terribly. Most of the donors that support us or the companies that support us, even up till now, some of them are closed. Mm -hmm. uh, the head office is not functioning like it used to function. Our funding is just basically dropped. Uh, the people that, um, that used to fund us, they actually wrote us letters back and say, you know what, just hold on off a little bit. We're also going through uh, some challenges. We're going through some pra uh, struggles. And we understand that, you know, because if, if the economy does well, if the companies does well, if our funders does well, we will do well. So we understand the, the dynamics, we understand the, the challenges, and, uh, you know, every day we pray that, that, that you know, somehow, somehow this thing will, will come to an end. But, you know, all the people that has funded us or contributed something towards the organization, no matter how small, we appreciate it and we say thank you very much.